Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and the cycle nutters. I'm uh, gonna do a tech video, something I've been contemplating doing for a while. And uh, when I was researching it, I figured, th thought at first that it was going to be pretty easy. more research I did, and trying to come up with uh, how to put the video forward. I'm, I'm not positive this will come out great, but let's give it a shot. So I want to talk about this idea of back pressure and that back pressure is good in any way. The argument usually goes, you put a full exhaust system on it, hurts the bottom end. And that's because you don't have enough back pressure. And I'm doing air quotes for the back pressure. And this concept, or concept, it's just wrong. There is at no point that, uh, what would back pressure be? Back pressure would be resistance of flow into the pipe. And at no time would resistance to flow ever help the motor make more power. That doesn't mean that putting a big, large open exhaust system is good for power. And I'll explain though what is going on because it's not related to back pressure. It's related to scavenging effect. And let's explain what that is. Before we get too into it, let's just cover some basics. We're gonna assume for this discussion, we're talking about four stroke motors, unfortunately. Um, two strokes completely different. But on the four stroke motor, we have an intake, a compression, a power, and an exhaust stroke. So that means for every two revolutions of the motor, you get one exhaust stroke. And this is important because people, I think, think about exhaust as a continuous flow, but the exhaust flows through the tubing in pulses. And so it's not a constant flow, it's a pulse every time the exhaust valve opens, piston comes up, pushes that exhaust out, and that happens once every two complete revolutions. It's also important, this one I'm sure a lot of people don't think about because I get questions about both intake, filters, it flow 200% better, and blah, blah, blah. And you know, the intake charge, the size, and the exhaust charge is pretty much fixed to the size of the cylinder. People tend to think size of motor, but a 1000 cc bike that's a two cylinder has far different exhaust needs, pipe size, than it does for a four cylinder. The two cylinders, obviously, each cylinder is larger, so each exhaust pulse would be larger. When the exhaust charge goes through the exhaust valve and into the exhaust tubing, it creates a positive pressure wave that and then extends out all the way through the exhaust. Okay, that's pretty obvious, right? But what's not so obvious is this phenomenon that behind that positive pressure wave is a negative pressure wave. And that negative pressure wave, you think it almost is like a suction. And that negative pressure wave follows all of those positive pressure pulses. Something that seems a bit counterintuitive is that the smaller, to a point, that the exhaust tubing is, the speed through the pipe of the discharged exhaust will actually increase. So a larger piece of tubing, larger diameter tubing, the speed will be slower. And on a smaller, the speed will be greater. And this directly is proportional, the speed is directly proportional to the size of that negative pressure wave trailing the positive pressure. So what does that mean? So what that means is if we have exhaust tubing and it's a little smaller and we go through the exhaust tubing that it will create a stronger negative pressure wave. If the exhaust tubing is too large, it will create a slower and less of a negative pressure wave. Going back to the two exhaust pipes that I had on the bench, the first one is for an MT-09 Yoshimura. It's a three into one design, and that means we have three pipes that go down into one. And where they go into one is called the collector. And this is where that negative pressure wave becomes important because as it comes past the collector, that negative pressure wave creates a scavenging effect on the other cylinders. So on the case of a three cylinder bike, we have a three into one design, one collector, we get that scavenging effect once. The strength of that scavenging effect is determined by the speed of the exhaust through the collector. So if these piping is too large and the speed slows down, the scavenging effect will be less at a, the same RPM. Here I have an MT-10 exhaust and on four cylinder bikes, most of the time we have what's called a four into two. 
and then we would have another pipe here that collected down into one. So you actually have two opportunities for this scavenging effect. So let's do a little experiment where we're going to put some compressed air down this exhaust port and let's see if we get vacuum on the other one. Every time I spray, it sucks the paper down to the other ports, demonstrating that we have a vacuum. If I blow from that side, they blow out, obviously. But here, every time I push air down there, it creates a vacuum. The final part that I'm going to talk about related to the speed of the exhaust pulse is the actually the RPM of the motor. As the RPM rises, the piston's moving faster. It's pushing that exhaust charge out faster. So the velocity of the exhaust charge gets faster as the RPMs come up. And this is part of the, where we come into somewhat of a compromise. Tubing that is large enough to flow the exhaust flow at higher RPMs probably is not the same tubing that is optimal at a lower RPM. So this exhaust tubing size has to be worked out to where, where do we want the most scavenging effect to take place at what RPM? And so that diameter of the tubing is determined based off that and where we're going to get the best pull and what's important to us. Do we need flow at high RPMs for a screaming high RPM motor? Or do we want a good scavenging effect at lower RPMs so that we can help empty that cylinder, create suction on? The next thing I want to talk about with the scavenging effect is the timing of it. So as we've discussed, the faster that the charge goes past the collector, the more of that scavenging or suction effect it creates on the other cylinders. And we can change the timing or the exhaust manufacturers can change the timing by moving this collector closer or farther away from the head. Obviously, the farther away it is, the more time it would take for that pulse to get back. The closer it is, less time it would take. And that's important for timing it with when the exhaust valve is open. Last point to talk about is the length of tubing past the collector. If the tubing is too short and we go to too large of a tubing or end the tubing, then that cuts off that scavenging effect quicker. There is definitely, in my experience, a minimal length that we need of pipe past the collector. But once we get past that minimal length, I haven't noticed uh, improvements with just adding additional length. As one bike that is uh, particularly sensitive to that length of pipe after the collector is the MT-10. And if you look at different exhaust systems by different manufacturers, you notice there's a huge difference in that length. And that's something important to take into an account when you're tuning. They're not all the same. So uh, that length of tubing past the collector, as long as we have the minimal amount, is important to maintain that scavenging effect through the collector. I hope that wasn't too much talk in circles and babbling on. I hope it made sense. Uh, so the next time you hear somebody talk about back pressure, you want to say, no, it's not back pressure that's a problem. It's the lack of velocity and losing the scavenging effect. Before I go, I'd also like to point out that it's not always true that you lose bottom end power when installing a full exhaust. As a matter of fact, on almost all of the bikes that I've tested, I can put a full system on them and I gain power from idle to red line. I think a big reason for this is just the improvements that we have with tuning and being able to access the ECU and all the tuning parameters and how in depth uh, that we're able to get and we're able to match the exhaust flow uh, requirements or fueling requirements very specifically to the motor and this just results in good running and better power everywhere so thanks guys for watching remember hit that subscribe and like button for more motorcycle related content appreciate each and every one of you